Okay, <coughs> so lesson 93 of A Course in Miracles, Light and Joy and Peace Abide in Me. You think you are the home of evil, darkness and sin. You think if anyone could see the truth about you, he would be repelled, recoiling from you as if from a poisonous snake. You think if what is true about you were revealed to you, you would be struck with horror so intense that you would rush to death by your own hand, living on after seeing this being impossible. These are beliefs so firmly fixed that it is difficult to help you see that they are based on nothing. So for me this is like referring to the early lessons, uh, all my thoughts are meaningless. So these, these are just, as, as the ego, as one identifies with the thinking and the ego starts to inflate, you have all of these belief systems, like if someone saw who I really was, you know, they'd run away and it'd be horrific. Or if I, you know, if I was to see myself as a truly am, you know, it'd be, uh, life wouldn't be worth living. So all of these sort of very negative belief systems are there. But actually, uh, as, it, as it says, the Course says, these are beliefs so firmly fixed that it is difficult to help you see that they are based on nothing, because they're just thoughts. So if you let the meaning of those thoughts go, then you realize your, your true, untethered and enlightened or limitless self. So that you have made mistakes is obvious. That you have sought salvation in strange ways, have been deceived, deceiving and afraid of foolish fantasies and savage dreams, and have bowed down to idols made of dust. I was, uh, I was like that, you know, bang, bang down to idols made of dust. And to have an ego is to, is to be in idolatry, you know, just to have thoughts is a, a, the idolatry of the ego self. And then the ego self makes idols of, you know, people, places and situations externally. So these are all mistakes, because as the ego is, as, it, as you identify with thoughts, you become a separate self. And that separate self thinks that other things in the externalized perceptual, perceptual world are the remedies if you can control them or get them. It believes in magical belief systems. So, all this is true by what you now believe. Today, we question this, <coughs> not from the point of view of what you think, but from a very different reference point from which such idle thoughts are meaningless. These thoughts, I mean, I guess that could be the observing, the pure observer. These thoughts are not according to God's will. These weird beliefs he does not share with you. This is enough to prove that they are wrong, but you do not perceive that this is so. Why would you not be overjoyed to be assured that all the evil that you think you did was never done, that all your sins are nothing? So. This is the thing of, um, would you not be overjoyed? You see, once you let go of identifying with thoughts that, and, and the me and the idea of a separate me in a separate world and that a separate me could inflict pain onto other separates, as that all dissolves and you realise your eternal, timeless, limitless nature, um, then you realise, as it says here, you, you realise that you're in these states of joy. Uh, and also these ideas that you were evil, uh, doing evil, dis dissipate in that uh, beautiful state. I also, just to share my own experience, I remember um, when I was working, uh, you know, I was very egotistical working in the stock market. Um, and, uh, you know, I was f full of dishonesty, selfishness, uh, mired in lots of addiction. And I suddenly had kidney failure and I was in the, in the Royal Free Hospital and the doctor saying we don't know what to do to keep you alive and I surrendered, I surrendered facing death and I had this beautiful heavenly peace come upon me and I actually realised it doesn't really matter how much bad stuff you've done if you just surrender and let go of everything it's like in that moment you have the bliss and, uh, and the love of the universe and it do doesn't really matter, it's like the universe doesn't hold any grudges. Like, uh, you know, I didn't have to do like hundreds of years of atonement or, or 
prayer or anything. Just let go and in an instant, you know, you're in the grace. So I realise, you know, God's love is unconditional, you just have to let go. That you are as pure and holy as you were created, and that light and joy and peace abide in you, your image of yourself cannot withstand the will of God. I like what it says there, image. You know, as you identify with thoughts, you have a, like a personality or an image which is not real. You think that this is death, but it is life. If you let your ego die, it is eternal life. You think you are destroyed, but you are saved. The self you made is not the son of God. Therefore, the self does not, that's the self of the smallest, does not exist at all. That's true, the ego self does not exist. Um, the ego self, self is just a construct of identified thoughts which are identified with time, with limitation, with separation. And actually it doesn't exist. If you let that identification of those attachments go, which are the underpinning of the identified ego, you see that it's based on nothing. Uh, and anything it seems to do and think means nothing. It is neither bad nor good. It is unreal. And nothing more than that. It does not battle with the Son of God. It does not hurt him nor attack his peace. It has not changed creation nor reduced etern eternal sinlessness to sin. Which is beautiful. You know, as you let go of identifying with thoughts and images and beliefs of the ego, you realize that your, etern your, your nature is eternal. Uh, and uh, and sinless. So and love, uh, sorry, and to, sinlessness to sin and love to hate. What power can this self you may possess when it would contradict the will of God? Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Over and over, this must be repeated until it is accepted. It is true. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Nothing can touch it or change what God created as eternal. You know, for me, the Course often talks about these things and just repeat it and repeat it until it becomes true. You know, even in the beginning, your ego like, has a lot of resistance you know, to saying, my sinlessness is guaranteed by God, nothing can touch it. But you're just breaking down all those ego belief systems which created the separation. Yeah? Can I, I mean, yes. I'm not trying to go too much off at a tangent. Yeah. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God and light and joy and peace abide within you. Yeah. How important do you feel the process, bearing the 12 step fellowship, how important do you believe the process of step nine is, of going out and actually making amends, considering there's no need for forgiveness? And it's, it's, well, I kind of see that as being tied in with that. It's like if you are, if you have surrendered your ego and you're living in the, within the spirit and the path of God, yes. therefore the slate has been wiped clean on yeah. a spiritual level. Yes. How important is it then to dip back into ego to go around making amends for all the things that you perceive have been as harmful? Because well, whether we've created harm for somebody or else, a lot of the time it's it's our perception that we've created harm. That's, that's true. And it's their perception that they've been harmed. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, 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 that I totally agree. And enlighten, yeah. enlightenment is actually transcending personal karma. Yeah. So the idea that I was a separate, I, separate person doing separate things is transcended. Yeah. Because you see, that's an illusion. Yeah. So, in the enlightened state, that that need would not arise. Mm. You've even transcended the birth and death and the identification with the body yes. as being real and what you are. So that that would not arise and wouldn't be necessary. Yeah. But if you stay as a separate as a separate, if you experience yourself as being a separate person, identity, then you may feel guilt because you're still in separation, yeah. that you're real and therefore that what you did to others was real and therefore you may feel that if you um, went up to them and apologised or offered them restitution, then you, you're allowed to let go of your guilt for what you did as a separate person to another separate person time, because, yeah. because that seems to be the real thing. And it goes back happened. into this idea that you actually have to do something is always to receive atonement rather yes. than atonement being guaranteed. Yes, uh, yes, that's right. So mm -hmm. that, that's how I see it. So in 12, in 12 steps you still believe you are separate, yeah. a separate th person doing separate things to separate things yeah. and you're an individual. And so while you still believe yourself to be an individual, 
it's hard to let go yeah. of the guilt. I mean, the way I've tended to operate, which might be a little bit away from the mainstream, yes. is that in the amends that I feel that I have on my list, yes. it's not like I'm actively seeking out to find people, but if those people present themselves to me, then I'm willing to have that conversation Yes. if, there, if it feels like there's an inspiration towards a need or I have the actual honest means to make a restitution, because there's no point in saying sorry. I'm really sorry at that time I stole all that money. Yeah. Can't give you any of it back, but I'm really sorry anyway. It feels yes. a little bit like, well, that makes it about me and not about them. Yes. Uh, and, and, it's, um, and this I'm finding, because I understand this. Now, I've, I've gone away from other fellowships, and I've gone into Debtors Anonymous, yeah. which really focuses on the money and the money that I owe. Yes. And there's this... Well, I've got to think of all those thousands of pounds that I might have messed up with in the past and yes. debts and this. And on one level, there is this, oh my God, this is going to be really scary going to restitute, make restitutions. But on the other hand, then on the other side is, well, is this actually really, really necessary if I can transcend the need to do that? Because I'm not responsible for what other people attract into their lives. And I'm also not necessarily responsible for the behaviour that I did when I was living more unconsciously and separate. And so, so it's, a, it's an interesting question to continue to do, to not use, oh, well, I'm special and different, so I don't do, as I, I don't do it the way you do it, and then, uh, you, you get me? Yeah, I, I think, you know, I mean, I mean, whatever you do is okay. I think while, you're, while you still experience yourself as separate, um, uh, uh, and you're still in a highly identified separate experiencing of life, yeah. then, um, you know, like what Buddha said and all the teachers say, you, you, you seem to be subject to the laws of karma. Yeah. So it's like, you know, often when you're in a highly identified state, like I remember once in a 12-step meeting, someone said that um, uh, something like they, they were in a car and a cycle cut them up, and they were really like angry, and then the uh, uh, you know, and then the next time they were cycling and a car cut them up. Yeah. And it was like, you know, the universe was like just giving them what they had just done. Um, so, so, so you may experience that while you're in an identified state. Yeah. Or you know, if I steal all the biscuits in this place. Yeah, then I mean, I see. Yeah, I see that from a slightly different thing. So it's yeah. like if I've got this past residue yes. where I think it's me against the world. It's like here I am working class here, you know, and, yes. and the system is out to get me. Then what I'm going to do while I'm living and I'm identifying the world being out to get me is yes. I'm going to find reasons to fight with the world. Yeah. So yeah. all of a sudden I'll be getting more parking tickets and, and, yeah. Yeah. and I'll be getting more attacks from crazy political people and I'll have the, uh, and I'll have the authorities at my door, blah, 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 because yes. I'm identifying with this need to fight. Yes. Mm. So it's like, mm. I've got a need to fight. Well, okay, and God says, okay, Paul, you've got a need to fight. Have some stuff to fight with. I yeah. agree. Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah, it is, it is very, very anyway, interesting. Anyway, sorry, I digressed yeah. No, no, yeah, it's no, great. No, thank, fine, you for, yeah. thank you for digressing. Yeah. Okay, so your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Nothing can touch it or change what God created as eternal. So once I'm in the eternal state, nothing can touch me. Mm. And even if things are witnessed to happen in the world, they don't touch me either anyway, so whatever happens. Yeah. And if you're in the eternal state, you don't even identify. So even if they did happen, you wouldn't even notice that they had happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it doesn't really, doesn't really matter anyway. So it's only the identified state that gets hurt and bruised and thinks it's uh, sinful. So the self, the self uh, you made, evil and full of sin, is meaningless. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God, and light and joy and peace abide in you. Salvation requires the acceptance of but one thought. You are as God created you, not what you made of yourself. You know, for me, when it, when it, the way I read that, when it says you are what God created me, that means I'm, I'm the eternal. You know, I'm prior to, to the limited. So whatever evil you may think you did, you are as God created you. I mean, for me, God created me. Um, sinless means, to me, beyond form, beyond time, beyond uh, uh, separation. Whatever mistakes you made, the truth about you is unchanged. Yeah, that's what I mean. 
Mm. So whenever it says, I, you know, the truth about me is unchanged, I must be the eternal. I must be that before time, before form, before birth, before death, the unchanged. God created me the unchanging, which is kind of like a paradox because then, you know, it wouldn't, there wouldn't be a God creating me because I'm beyond uh, me and a God. So creation is eternal and unalterable. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. You are and will forever be exactly as you were created, i.e. that's eternal, before birth and death. Light and joy and peace abide in you because God created them there. And that refers to the things um, that we're just removing the blocks to love. You know, I am, my intrinsic nature is eternal, is love, is light, infinitely and has never been born or died. So we're just removing the blocks which are perception or identification so that it can realize the truth, you know, the light and joy that abides in me. So in our longer exercise periods today, which would be most profitable if done for the first five minutes of every waking hour, begin by stating the truth about your creation. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Here again, I really like this thing of the first five minutes of every waking hour. And this is the thing where the Course is really saying that the world is not that important. You know, the ego goes, God, I've got to pay my bills, not in the first five minutes of the hour, you see. <laughs> or, or my boyfriend's calling me, or the girlfriend's calling me. Well, I'm, not, I'm forgetting that because it's the first five minutes. So you break the addiction to the world. Because to be free is more important than how the ego thinks whatever it's it's addicted to do in the first five minutes of every... You may even find that things start happening in the first five minutes of every hour, that the ego manifests things so that you can't choose God instead of uh, whatever it is, donuts or something. So then put away your foolish self-images and spend the rest of the practice period in trying to experience what God has given you in place of what you have decreed for yourself. I like that experience. You're trying to experience the timeless eternal stillness prior to the thoughts. You are what God created or what you made. One self is true. That's the self with the capital S. So the eternal self is true. The other is not there. So when you're identified with the ego, that's the illusion. You're in a world of separation, death and time and that what you do to others is real and that separation is real. So try to experience the unity of your one self. So this for me is like a level of consciousness, is oneness. When you let go of enough identif identification, it's not like there's several clouds in this room, it's just the oneness of the sky, you experience the oneness. So try to appreciate its holiness. Again, holiness is oneness, because there's just one of us, there's one whole here, there's not separate separation. So try to appreciate its holiness and the love from which it was created. Try not to interfere with the self which God created as you, by hiding its majesty behind the tiny idols of evil and sylphness you have made to replace it. That's ego identification. So let it come into its own. Here you are, this is you, and light and joy and peace abide in you because this is so. You may not be willing or even able to use the first five minutes of each hour for these exercises. Try, however, to do so when you can. At least remember to repeat these thoughts each hour. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Then try to devote at least a minute or so to closing your eyes and realizing that this is a statement of the truth about you. If a situation arises that seems to be disturbing, Quickly dispel the illusion of fear by repeating these thoughts again. Should you be tempted to become angry with someone, tell him silently, Light and joy and peace abide in you. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. So that's a lovely application yeah, to, to apply nice. on others. Um, so you can do much for the world's salvation today. You can do much today to bring you closer to the, to the part in salvation that God has assigned to you. And you can do much today to bring the conviction to your mind that the, that the idea for the day is true indeed.